All right, uh, next thing we're going to do is deal with situations where you've got a roof and a floor and a wall that all kind of blend together. So it's common to see buildings that have um, a, a less distinct, I guess, separation between roof, wall, floor. So it'll have the effect of kind of wrapping around the wall that I've got here. And there's a couple different ways that we can do this. Um, the first method that I'm going to use is actually using the wall tool. And that will make sense where it exists on the two sides, of course, but this is, again, a situation where the wall kind of becomes the roof and maybe even includes a floor element underneath. And uh, one thing that we can do here to create that is just go back to our level one floor plan view. And we're going to create a new wall type. So in our level one floor plan view, we'll activate the wall tool. And we'll go back to our generic 200 millimeter wall that we used for the first wall. But rather than stick with that, we're going to go to edit type and make a duplicate. So I will create duplicate and it wants to know a name of this and I'll just call this my uh, wall roof, kind of a combination there. So I'll click OK and at the moment I'm just going to leave it as 200 millimeters won't change anything about its properties or its structure, so I'll click OK. And I'm going to deliberately place this in front of the wall that I created in the last couple steps. And now that I've got that wall created, I'm going to go to my self elevation view, select that new wall. So this is the regular, just vertically extruded uh, rectangular wall. And like I did before in the last step, I'm going to select it and edit the profile. And when I click on edit profile, again, I'll see the pink lines for the sketch. And I'm just going to select all four of those lines and hit delete and start from scratch. And you'll notice that when you do that, you still kind of see these lingering outlines for the original shape of the wall. Don't worry, you're not bound to those. You can create whatever shape you like. And what I'm going to do with this one is use the pick lines function and rely on the wall that lies behind the one that I'm creating now. So I'm going to click pick lines and just make my way around the shape of this originally customized wall. Watching out for gaps and overlaps. The sketch won't complete if I have any of those. And uh, once I get this shape done, remember you might have to use your trim extend to corner tool in order to ensure that this shape is enclosed with no gaps or overlaps. So I have a mimicked profile here. But remember, as I said, my goal with this one is that I want to create kind of a shell around this wall. So I'm going to use pick lines again and specify an offset of, let's say, 300 millimeters. And just repeat that same process. So I'm clicking on the pink sketch lines that I just created. But with the offset at 300 millimeters, I'll see, of course, that they fall just a little outside of those initial pink sketch lines. And in this way, I'm going to create kind of a shell, a roof object that becomes a wall object that could even be described as a floor object as well. So I'm going to rely on my trim extend tool here just to make sure that that is also resolved with no gaps or overlaps. So now when I click on the green check, I'm going to get an extrusion, which will be like a ring around my original customized wall. So I'll click on the green check. No errors there, so it lets me complete the sketch. And if I go to a 3D view, again, I'll see this kind of ring around the wall. Now this is unlike the way that we've treated the wall tool uh, prior to this point. We've just kind of used it in its traditional sort of application, but there's nothing wrong with just clicking on this new wall that I've created and changing its depth by just clicking on edit type and having it extrude throughout the length of the building. So after I've clicked on the edit type properties window, I can go to the edit structure and instead of 200 millimeters, I could have this be 10,000 millimeters. So now I've got something that gives me that kind of impact or that effect of being entirely outside of my customized wall. Now that's going to require a little bit of further customization, but that's fairly easy to do. I can just go to my level one floor plan view and then just move this back a little bit.
creating a shape that looks like that. 